What's up everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things. Finally have a good day today. If you caught the last video, you will know that I was going out to test my Tundra in its stock form and well, it didn't go so hot. So I checked a lot of the boxes of some of the modifications that I want to do for the truck, mainly for like off-road capability and functionality wise, but today we're stock camping, which is really the plan from yesterday's video when we got stuck. So I'm out here again with Ryan and Alyssa. What did we learn yesterday? Don't forget your Max Track. <laughs> Ryan ended up bringing his Tacoma, which would have been very useful yesterday. He brought Max Tracks. I brought Max Tracks. More recovery gear. I brought shovels. We got everything that we would need if there was snow. But luckily, we came back to a very frequented spot here on the channel. Just something easy, and the weather is very nice today. So we're gonna check out how it is camping with this thing in its stock form. So the Tundra, as it sits right now, unmodified other than my Diamondback cover, and it's going in for all the upgrades that we talked about in the last video here pretty soon. But I figured this would be the perfect opportunity to bring out the rustic mountain overland trailer this one is the one that you guys probably saw me pull behind my storyteller up to wyoming last year we went to the tetons and yellowstone and i did a full overview of this trailer in that video so if you guys want to check that out i'll leave a link up in the corner now the reason for me pulling this out here is because well there's actually two reasons once i build a rack setup for my diamond back here this is essentially what the setup will look like. In an ideal situation, I do want to run the Free Spirit Recreation Evolution tent. It's gonna be the Evo V2, and it's the long one because I, of course, have a six and a half foot bed. With the proper rack system and this tent, I can also finally run an awning, which is something that you guys have not seen other than on my vans. This is a driver's side awning. However, I would prefer a passenger side awning and I can explain more about that in a little bit. So the reason I wanted to show you guys this setup right here while the truck is in its stock form is because I think these trailers are very capable. I know they're capable because of everything that we've done with them so far, but it's also very practical for a large majority of people. And I'm gonna say this term, not in a bad way at all, but the weekend warriors, people who probably work a nine to five and can only really get out and camp on the weekends, a truck, trailer combo like this, this might be the perfect setup for a lot of people who are just kind of like casual campers. Since this truck is stock and it drives great right now, I would honestly like to leave it that way. However, with how I use a vehicle, it definitely needs some upgrades. But say I still work a nine to five job and I drive this truck to work every day, I don't want to have a ton of gear like a rack and a tent and an awning and all of my camping stuff on it all the time. So this is kind of the perfect setup to leave in its camping form, leave all of your camping gear inside of this trailer. And then Friday after work, go home, pick up your trailer and head to the mountains. So all of the camping stuff is contained in the Rustic Mountain Overland trailer. And my truck is still just a regular old stock truck. Luckily, these trailers are fairly light and pretty much any vehicle can pull them. Another thing to note is that you can get them upfit just like this from Free Spirit Recreation in Golden, Colorado. So this setup right here, which I talked about before, is a Lightner rack with their tent and awning. I have some mats on the inside and right now the inside is pretty bare bones because I haven't used the trailer much, but that could change over this year and maybe even over the next couple of months. All right, guys, we're going to start off by getting this awning out. And this is something that I've used on like my friends' vehicles in the past. But like I said, the Axis Cab Tacoma and a very low profile rack on the Diamondback didn't really work for a setup like this. But I have messed with these awnings before and I actually really like them. So this cover and everything stays completely on here. And like I said, again, this is the 270 awning. I will show you what the 180 looks like in a second. but. They're just straps that you pull off. And now I can grab this hook here and simply walk it around. It is a little windy, so I apologize about the audio and everything. But I'll pull this into place. There's a little hook and a cinch strap. Pull that tight and that's really all it takes about maybe 15 seconds, maybe 30 seconds to pull this thing out. 
completely freestanding. There are options for legs and tie downs if you wanna secure this thing in windy environments like this, but supposedly these can hold up to some pretty abusive conditions. So it is windy out here, typically always is, and we'll see how this goes for the night. Now for the tent, on the trailer I have an Evolution V2 XL. So this would fit pretty perfectly with the truck setup. Just imagine this whole thing transferred forward. I'm gonna pop these latches and this is something that you guys have not seen before. This is probably gonna shock some of you guys. <laughs> this is a all white colorway Evo V2 XL. You guys know I am all black everything, but with the white trailer and the white truck, this is actually a pretty cool color combo. Now I've reviewed, I think two different versions of the Evo, the first generation as well as the V2. The V2 short actually fit on my Tacoma on the six foot bed pretty well. And this one is very similar in every way as a V2, but it's the XL size. So it's a little bit bigger in every dimension. And the tri-layer and the whole outside is white. The interior of this thing is still blacked out like you would expect. So this is just gonna be another option for someone who wants to kind of personalize their own camp setup. It may also be good for people who live in the South. Maybe you're in Texas or Arizona or Florida and you don't want a black tent, which would in theory absorb more of the heat. This white colorway will hopefully reflect the heat and keep it a little bit cooler in here. But at the same time, on a night like tonight when it will probably drop to maybe the 20s, we still have the tri-layer fabric on here, which means I should remain pretty warm. For the ladder, I have that stored in the tongue box of this trailer. If I was running a setup like this all the time, I think what I would actually do is climb up the front of the tongue box and just enter through the side of the tent. But for now, since I have all this room and I have the ladder with me, I will set this up for the night. Wrap that around there to secure the ladder. Now we're pretty much set up. All right guys, it's about 5.30 now. Luckily, we're past daylight saving, so we got a little bit more daylight here. We're getting hungry, so Team FSR is in charge of cooking. So coming over to check out this Rustic Mountain Overland trailer. Same thing, the patrol with the tongue box. He has a fridge slide in his, fit with a Dometic. Ooh, what is this? Are we allowed to show this? Yeah. Look at this. So we're having steaks tonight and chicken and patty. We, I mean, you guys brought a lot of food. <laughs> but free spirit cookware and storage and you got a whole lot of new stuff coming out. So similar to my trailer, this is fit with the Lightner rack, of course. This is the Evolution Standard, which is a little bit slimmer than the XL that I have. And here you can see the benefits of a 180 awning. So this mounts up to whatever side of the vehicle that you want, and of course it stays on that side. 180 degrees of coverage. If you compare them by area, I believe the 180 is technically a little bit bigger, but you're covering a different area of the vehicle. So 180 is good if you want to just keep things out from the back of the vehicle, like if you are driving a 4Runner, as an example. If your tailgate goes all the way up in the rear, a 180 is going to work a lot better than the 270. However, with a pickup truck, this is the setup that I would run, and I would prefer to have it on the passenger side of the vehicle. Not exactly sure why. Actually, Ryan ran this setup. Why do you like it on the passenger side? Uh, I run on the passenger side so I can get in the driver's side of my tent. That, okay, that's the reason that I was thinking. I don't know if I was crazy or not, but right now the way the tent is set up on the trailer, you enter from the passenger side of the vehicle. So basically, I'd flip the tent around and flip the awning to a passenger side awning. That way the tailgate of the truck would be covered and then I can have this area covered for like sitting and eating. And then when you're ready to go to bed at night, come around, get whatever you need out of the driver's side of the truck and then climb into your tent this way. It really all comes down to personal preference, but in my head, that's the way that I'm thinking about it. 
I hop out of my truck, whether I use the awning or not, I'm on the side of the tent that you can open and climb into. So there's a lot of stuff to think about there, but I like experimenting with all of this new gear, even though it's not on the truck, it's on the trailer right now because it gets my gears moving. It's helping me envision what I'm gonna do with the Tundra. And then there was one, just me solo camping. Those guys were obviously out here to shoot some product stuff for Free Spirit, but got some good food in there. I know that was a lot of cooking footage, but man, we had burgers and steak and everything. I mean, everything that you guys saw, steak and eggs and chicken. So it's nice when you have trailers like this to set up a full cooking kitchen like that. Some of that stuff you saw there was Free Spirit product and it'll be coming out soon. They have utensils and the storage containers and things like that. So that's the gear that I'm really excited about because when it comes to camping, I like being as minimal as possible wherever I can be. So all of that like storage bags and cutlery that kind of like folds up and everything, I'm a big fan of all of that. One thing that I've been thinking about working on with this truck is actually kind of like a mobile kitchen setup. Originally, I posted on Instagram a little while ago and I was talking about drawer slides that you can pull out the bed of a truck and you have a cooktop and your utensils and all of your kitchen gear right there ready to go. However, I thought it would be cool to put something like that into a case like one of my Rome boxes. So you pop the lid, have a molly panel and have cutlery and utensils and stuff and then you have a burner right there. So you just hook up some propane and you can cook all self-contained in a single unit. The reason I would prefer that over a slide out is because then I could move it between vehicles. You could throw it in a 4Runner, the RAV4, you could throw it in a different truck. That way you always have your same kitchen, cooking, camping essentials everywhere you go no matter what vehicle you take. So if you guys know of a product that is like that already that's out there on the market, let me know. I haven't seen anything. And if something like that doesn't come to market sooner than later, I might just make something myself because that would be absolutely ideal. So now it's just me by the fire. We had a really nice sunset and luckily the wind stopped. So the weather out here is very nice as of now. No stars tonight because we're almost at a full moon. A little bit of cloud coverage. Let me see if I have enough reception to check the weather. If this location is right, we're going down to, not too bad, 33 degrees, real feel of 25. No rain in the forecast until tomorrow night, so I poured myself some 
gas station wine. A lot of people ask me what I like to drink when we go camping, and honestly, I don't drink alcohol very often when we camp because I camp so often. It would become a problem. So I got wine at the gas station. Gonna have a little bit of this, enjoy the night, and then we'll climb up into this white Evolution V2, and there's some pretty cool stuff that I'm gonna show you guys in the tent, but for now I'm gonna enjoy the fire and wait until it gets dark, dark out here. Well, it's about 10 o'clock at night, and as you guys can probably hear, this wind is really picking up. Hoping it dies down eventually, but fire's out, and I'm gonna climb into the tent. Should probably close my tailgate up for the night. Oh, yeah. Now, typically, I would use a boot bag for my boots because they're a little dirty. But this Evolution V2 has these mesh pockets hanging on each side of the tent and then even a mesh pocket up above here. When I tested the V2 short, I don't believe they had stuff like that quite yet. So I can literally just take my boots and stick them right above. I love having extra storage in places like this because like I said, I like organization. Now luckily, I can hear the wind outside, but I don't feel it at all in here. So that's good. We're looking at the positives right now. So for the inside of this tent, like I mentioned earlier, it is very black out in here, which is nice. And we have pockets all around. So depending on which way you're sleeping, Got a little clear pocket here and up at the top. We of course have the light strips which are included in all of their tents and then I threw a little battery bank in here. I've had this light running for, I don't know, since we got to camp and set up the tent so quite a few hours now and that thing is still going strong. A couple little changes that I notice is of course the mesh pocket on top and you'll notice a little air circulating symbol here. A tent like this in the summer is actually very nice because when you open that up, air that runs across the top of the hard shell will suck out any hot air in here. You'll also notice that symbol over here. There are little props on the outside and mesh on the inside so air can sneak up in there which I don't want tonight since it's gonna get a little cold. More pockets here on each side and then pass-throughs for a diesel heater hose on each side as well. When I was in this tent earlier when the sun was up, that was the only thing that I noticed that wasn't completely black out. So you can see a little bit of light through the white fabric. But other than that, this thing is pretty pitch black. Unless it's nice out, then you can open all the windows and sleep with a 360 view. So I of course love the Aspen light because I had a pretty big part in like pointing out features and changing things on that as we went through the prototype phase, but I really enjoy these Evolution tents. There's plenty of space for me to sit up. On the XL, you can easily sleep two adults and a dog. Even on the standard size, you could sleep two adults fairly comfortably. And then for the bedding options on this one, we have the EPE foam, which I've talked about on some other tents in the past, but there's a new Aircore mattress in here, and this thing is thick. This is a four inch thick Aircore mattress, and let me tell you, it feels very nice right now. I'm hoping the wind doesn't get too bad so I can actually sleep pretty well tonight, but regardless, I should be comfortable. There are some updated features too, like these little pole strings here to cinch up the bug nets and the actual door itself, the tri-layer fabric there. Before that was Velcro, and I actually prefer this method of closure. There's just like little things that most people wouldn't notice unless you're testing out a bunch of different tents, but if I had the choice, I would definitely do something like this, and it's really nice. This is a great, great tent. Bedding itself underneath here, we're starting with, of course, that four inch thick air cord mattress, and Free Spirit has been designing their own bedding to kind of fit inside of the tent, so a lot of sleeping bags are very poofy and take up a lot of space. It makes closing the tent harder. So on top of the air core mattress, we have this cloud topper, which is like a pretty thick, almost down feeling comforter. So that adds even more cushion. And then I have their heated blanket and then their Sherpa blanket, which is their wearable blanket. Actually, it has a hood. Talked about that in the last camping video. And then we have a Sherpa blanket for the tent itself. So everything in here is super plush. 
I have no doubt that I'm gonna be warm tonight. And before I go to sleep, got this heated blanket plugged into a little Jackery. Gonna turn on the USB starting at 100%. If I tap this switch, now we are on red, which is the high mode. And I'm gonna go all the way down to that, lay on the heated blanket, and then have two of these on top of me. This might be best night sleep in a tent so far this year. All right, this is definitely some stuff I'm missing on the Aspen light, but EDC pocket, we made the big pockets above your head in that tent orange so you can see stuff and you can see it even better in white. Since you guys probably like gear on this channel, I bought these little things at Costco. They are Zippo brand, like the lighter brand, and they're hand warmers. I won't even need it tonight because I'm not that cold, but they're USB rechargeable and you just turn it on with a couple clicks and if your hands are freezing, this thing warms up really quick. I can already feel the warmth in here. I'm not sure how long they last, but pretty cool if it's really cold out and you're sitting around a fire. You can stick one of these in each pocket and stay really warm. And then down by my feet, I just shoved all of my clothing into a little storage net there. I really really like this tent there's a lot of good things to say about it but maybe this is one that i will run in the future like i said move this whole setup evo xl and 270 awning over to the diamondback that would be a pretty rad setup so i would typically end the video here but i'm gonna let it rock to the morning i will talk to you guys whenever i wake up i'm hoping the wind dies down and i'm hoping i get some good sleep tonight Good morning again, everyone. I just had probably one of the best nights sleep in that tent setup, and I feel really good right now. <laughs> I woke up around seven and it was a little bit cold, so I went back to sleep until nine when the sun came up over the hill and started hitting the tent. It's a nice, natural wake-up call, and it's gonna be another really beautiful day out here. So as far as this thing goes, it's very similar to the black version, but the limited edition is just white. This mattress was amazing, and all of this sleepwear was great too. I actually woke up around midnight, and this heated blanket was too hot. I was sweating, so I actually turned that all the way down to the lowest setting, and from 10 o'clock at night until 9 o'clock in the morning, we only drew it down to 65%. So. You could run that thing for a while. Now typically I would leave this bedding in here and suck the air out of the mattress. However, since I'm not going to be running this tent full time, I'm actually going to take some of the bedding out. That way I can put it in whatever tent actually goes on my truck. Alright, got this down to the cloud topper. I'm going to leave this one on because it actually has bungees that help keep it centered and kind of stay in place. And now I'm going to test out this new vacuum here because there's a lot more air to take out of this mattress. Here you can see how thick it is. About four inches. And I pumped it up last night. Flip this valve. Well, I think it did a pretty good job. And definitely good enough to close up an Evo like this because there's plenty of room. I think I might actually even leave the pump in here. breakdown of this whole setup is pretty dang easy and I like having the extra space in the trailer to put things like the ladder. Could have shoved all the blankets in there too. One thing that's funny about this setup is that the Rustic Mount Overland trailer I fit with owl wheels and some nice tires to match my van and because of that the trailer actually sits taller than the truck. Now I could adjust the 
block and roll hitch a little bit and make it a little bit taller there. But in two weeks, this thing will be sitting taller anyway. I just thought it was kind of funny that this has a nicer wheel and tire setup than the truck does stock. So that's just one way to camp with a stock vehicle. Of course, it's not gonna be everyone's choice, but it is kind of a neat concept to have everything loaded out on an overland trailer, which you can hook up to a regular vehicle and just pull out to enjoy a nice night of camping in places like this. It hopefully won't be too long until I can take this whole setup here, minus the rack, and just move it right here to the top of the Diamondback. That way everything will be self-contained. I still have a ton of space in the six and a half foot bed and I think that's going to be my ideal setup. So I think that's about all for this quick little semi-solo camp. If you guys have any questions on the truck or the trailer setup or any of the free spirit items that I was kind of testing out here, let me know. I think the next time you guys see this truck, there's a really good chance that it's going to be a different color. So stay tuned for that. If you're new here, consider clicking subscribe and make new videos every single week. As always, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one.